Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the SanDisk Extreme Pro Portable SSD version 2, a rugged pocket-sized USB drive that exploits the size, speed, and robustness of the latest solid-state storage. It works with Macs and PCs, as well as compatible phones, tablets, and games consoles, and is available in one or two terabyte sizes. I tested the latest 1TB version, launched in September 2020, which costs around $230 or pounds, and claims speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second, although the maximum performance will only be attainable on devices with the fastest USB ports, as I'll explain later. It's also really important to check the quoted speed of the drive when ordering one, as SanDisk has so far made several versions of its portable SSDs, rated between 550 and 2000 megabytes per second. The slower models are of course cheaper, and may be good enough for your needs. The last one I tested was an extreme version 1 250GB model 18 months earlier, rated at 550 megabytes per second, and that still feels pretty fast to me today. So let's see how much faster the Extreme Pro version 2 model is, and crucially, who will benefit from its faster speeds. But before delving into the actual performance in real life, why would you want a portable drive in the first place? Well, they're invaluable for backing up your data, transporting large files or collections, or simply freeing up space on a full computer so you can complete a project. I've relied on a small fleet of portable drives for years, from providing backup I can take off site, to actually hosting assets for large video projects. Portable SSDs have become fast enough for you to actually edit video straight off them, coming close to or even matching the speeds of internal drives. I also find them invaluable for getting photos and videos off or onto my phone or tablet, while gamers may use them to expand their storage. Some high-end cinema cameras can also record directly to SSDs, although do check for specific compatibility first as they can be quite fussy. Older spinning hard disks still work out cheaper than SSDs. At the time I made this video, you could buy a 4TB Western Digital My Passport drive for a little less than the cheapest 1TB portable SSD, or less than half the price of the 1TB Extreme Pro version 2 drive I'm testing here, while boasting four times the space of either. Hard disks aren't as fast, nor as compact as a portable SSD, and are also more vulnerable to knocks, but remain compelling value for money. I still use them for off-site backups of my photo and work collections, but I've now switched to SSDs for tasks where speed and pocketability are more important. Ok, so how does SanDisk's latest drive measure up? The Extreme Pro version 2 measures 110 by 57 mil That's just a bit longer than a credit card, and is just over 10 mm thick. That's similar in thickness to a modern phone, but much smaller overall, and at 84 grams, much lighter too, so it'll easily slip into almost any pocket. Much of what differentiates one portable drive from another is the case and finish, and SanDisk has once again gone with a rugged style sporting silicon on the rear for grip, and rounded corners for comfort in your hands or pockets. I really like it. There's also a handy cutout allowing you to attach it to a keyring, or hang off a carabiner, or a D-ring. Most usefully of all though is the IP55 rating for water and dust resistance. Before you get too excited though, you can't submerge the drive in water and expect it to survive, but it should shrug off mild splashes, rain or moisture, so long as you're careful not to expose the port. It also offers reasonable protection against shock and vibration. SanDisk claims it'll survive a 2 meter drop, and again, while it's not invincible, it will better protect your data from knocks and small falls than a mechanical hard disk. Like all modern portable drives, there's just one USB port used for data transfer and to actually power the device. SanDisk has sensibly opted for the latest USB-C port supporting USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, and that theoretically boasts up to 20 gigabits per second of bandwidth. But it's also backwards compatible with USB 3 and USB 2 devices, albeit with a reduction in speed. Rather than supplying a single cable with an adapter for older ports as it did on older Extreme drives, SanDisk now supplies the Extreme Pro with two cables, one ending in a USB-C plug and the other ending in USB-A. Much more convenient. While the latest Extreme Pro drives are pocket sized, they have grown noticeably compared to the previous Extreme models. Here's the newer Extreme Pro on the left, next to the plain Extreme on the right, which measures just 50mm wide, 96mm tall, 9mm thick and is half the weight at 40 grams. You'll also notice the cutout shape is different and smaller, and that the USB port on the older model is positioned to one side compared to the middle of the new one, and the older model also has a slower USB interface too. 
Size and cutouts aside, one of the most obvious identifiers between them is the orange stripe around the edge of the newer Extreme Pro models. These design cues all help you to find the right model, although remember, the Extreme Pro is also available in two versions, rated at 1050 or 2000 megabyte per second speeds, so you'll need to check their boxes too. Not only is the Pro model now supplied with two cables, but they're longer than the cable supplied with the older Extreme. Now some complained about the short length of the old cable, but I actually preferred it for dangling less obviously from a laptop than the new one does. Technically speaking, shorter cables are sometimes necessary for the fastest speeds, but I tried the new drive with both cables and measured no difference in performance, at least on my computer. Ok, now for performance with the latest Extreme Pro version 2 employing an NVMe SSD with claimed read and write speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second. I tested it on my fastest computer, a 2018 MacBook Pro which has USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports rated up to 10 gigabits per second, which works out at 1250 megabytes per second. Now given that this is a theoretical bandwidth and in practice you're more likely to be closer to achieving 1000 megabytes per second, it still represents a significant bottleneck for the Pro version 2 drive, allowing only roughly half its maximum data rate to pass. But don't assume a newer MacBook will be any better, as the USB ports on the late 2020 models are still restricted to 10 gigabit per second speeds. Indeed, if you want a 20 gigabit per second USB port at the time I made this review, you'll need to buy a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 expansion card for a desktop PC, which specifically quotes support for 20 gigabits per second, or wait for laptops with faster ports to arrive. It pays to check the specs of your system very carefully, especially as the labelling of USB ports can be very confusing. Across multiple runs on the Pro version 2 drive, the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test Utility measured between 940 and 960 megabytes per second for both reads and writes, whether using the 1 gigabyte or 5 gigabyte stress size. These scores are definitely being restricted by my MacBook's USB ports, but are still roughly double what I measured from the earlier Extreme version 1 drive, which itself was already four times faster than the spinning hard disk in my WD My Passport 4TB drive. In real life tests, I timed the transfer of a 2.99GB folder containing 177 JPEG and RAW images. The earlier Extreme version 1 drive took 14 seconds to write the data from my Mac onto the drive, then following a restart 7 seconds to read it back again from the drive. In contrast, the Extreme Pro version 2 took just over 5 seconds to write the data to the drive and just under 4 to read it back again. Just compare those times to my 4TB passport drive which took 44 seconds to write the data and 28 to read them back. The Extreme Pro version 2 really is a very fast drive, even when it's restricted to about half its maximum speed. I also tried copying a single large video file measuring 10.68 GB, which took 54 seconds to write and 20 seconds to read when using the older Extreme version 1 drive, but a mere 11.2 seconds to write or 11.4 seconds to read on the Extreme Pro version 2. Again, the almost identical figures for read and write performance of just under 1000 megabytes per second indicate a bottleneck, in this case my USB port, but it still remains much faster than my older Extreme version 1. I also tried editing entire 4K video projects directly from the drive with no performance issues on both my Mac laptop as well as my iPad Pro running LumaFusion as seen here, although this was also possible with the older Extreme version 1 drives. It also worked well when connected to my Samsung Galaxy S20 phone for copying large amounts of photos or videos to and from it. I didn't get the chance to try it on a games console or a cinema camera though, so I'd recommend checking for compatibility with specific models. During sustained use, I found the Extreme Pro version 2 drive generally became warmer than my previous Extreme version 1 drive. Not exactly hot, but definitely very warm. Sandisks employed an aluminium chassis to act as a heatsink, and it's certainly transferring the heat evenly across the case, unlike the previous Extreme version 1, which only tended to warm up around a concentrated port area. Ok, now for my verdict. As a photographer, I love using portable SSDs as quick, compact and robust backup drives. At the end of a day's shooting, I copy the card onto my laptop, then duplicate it onto the SSD. I then keep the SSD in a separate location to my computer, such as in a hotel safe when I was out with the laptop. The speed of the drive means you'll never neglect performing backups, the size means you'll always have it with you when you need it, and the robustness means you don't need to treat it with kid gloves, I can literally throw it into a bag or slip it in a pocket and not worry. 
As a video editor, I often find myself with giant folders of footage quickly consuming the internal drive of my laptop. Previously, I'd free up space by copying projects I wasn't currently working on to portable drives or network storage, but the slow speed meant a huge folder could take so long to copy it felt more like archiving. But with the SSD, I can rapidly transfer huge folders back and forth. It's so fast I can even work directly from the drive whether it's storing regular assets, an output render, or even an entire project. Now the load disk space warning no longer means I'm out of action. Wherever I worked I also liked how the drive was small and light enough to happily dangle from the end of its cable without demanding flat desk space to rest on. You can even pick up your laptop with it still dangling without troubling the drive or your ports. It's so convenient when you're literally working off your lap in a cafe or on a plane or train and you need to get up or move around. But if you're getting a sense of deja vu it's because I made the same conclusion at the end of my Extreme Version 1 drive review. All of the above is perfectly possible with an SSD rated at 550 megabytes per second. It's just that the newer Pro version 2 drive can theoretically do it four times faster still. Thing is though, at the time I made this review, most people won't be able to enjoy the top speed as their USB ports simply won't be fast enough. Not only will you need a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, but one that specifically supports 20 gigabit per second speeds, and that rules out even the late 2020 Apple laptops. So for many of us, the Pro version 2 drive will only work out twice as fast as the 550 megabyte per second models, so it's only going to be delivering half of its potential speed again for most of the people out there. Indeed, since SanDisk understandably charges a premium for the Pro version 2 performance, I wish they'd also make a Thunderbolt 3 version as this interface supports up to 40 gigabits per second, even on Macs sold from 2016. But by adopting the latest USB spec instead, there's not a lot of devices able to yet exploit the top speed. Of course, this does give the drive some degree of future proofing, but the simple fact is most people won't see a difference between the Extreme Pro version 2 and cheaper drives rated up to 1000 megabytes per second, like the Extreme Pro version 1 drives or Extreme version 2 models. Ultimately, backing up your data, whether it's photos, videos, music, or plain old documents, is critically important. And a crucial part of that process is transporting the backup to a different location. After all, fire, flood, and theft will rarely take one drive, but leave the backup next to it unharmed. This is why portable drives are so useful. They can store and transport a large quantity of data quickly and easily. Just one USB cable will transfer the data and power the drive, and once complete, they're small enough to slip into a jacket or even trouser pocket. Their portability also makes them great for providing more storage for laptop owners who have filled their internal drives but aren't quite ready for a system upgrade yet. The earlier SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD quickly found itself part of my workflow thanks to its speed, size and robustness, all of which meant I never had an excuse not to use it. It became my go-to backup when I'm out and about, and a convenient way to boost the storage on my laptop when working on big projects. The newer Extreme Pro version 2 provided the same flexibility but with the benefit of faster speeds and while my own devices meant I only enjoyed half of its theoretical performance, it remains the fastest drive I've tested. As such, unless I expected to buy a computer with a 20 gigabit USB port in the future, I'd personally save money and buy a model rated at 1000 megabytes per second, like the Extreme Pro version 1 or Extreme version 2 instead. But the bottom line here is regardless of model, I've come to regard a portable SSD as an essential accessory, and the Santis range provides an ever-growing choice of speeds, capacities and prices. So buy the one that best matches your needs, but do check the specs of the drive and your ports very carefully. Okay, that's the end of another review. I hope you found it useful. If you did, the best way to support me is to subscribe to my channel. It really does help a lot. And if you really, really found it useful, you could treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to some Camera Labs merchandise or perhaps a copy of my in-camera photography book. And there's links for all of those, including checking the latest prices on the SanDisk drives in the pinned comment and the description below. So let me know in the comments what you think of this drive and in particular what solution you're using for your backups and whether you've got a computer that can exploit 20 gigabit per second drives. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.